Hello everyone and welcome to a truly exceptional game from the final round of this year's Dubai Police Global Chess Challenge. It is Yuan Gi versus Vasily Vanchuk and it comes as a suggestion from a subscriber Gokan uh, Sahin. So thank you for suggesting it. Without it, uh, I wouldn't even know that the event was taking place, let alone that the great Chucky was playing. So we should all thank him as the game is, is quite a nice one. Uh, let's check it out. Yuan Gi with white opens with knight to f3. Uh, we have pawn to c5. This is called the Sicilian invitation reply to a reti. And usually, very rarely will you see e4 here because, okay, why would you play a reti if you actually want to play the Sicilian? You could have played e4. But by playing knight to f3, because if you play e4 first, then you have to be ready for the um, uh, for the French, for the Karl Khan, for, for, for the Petrov, for... Uh, any sort of uh, e4 reply, but by going knight to f3 first, and then if your opponent plays c5, okay, you have avoided everything you don't want to play, and you transpose into um, uh, the, the Sicilian. So if something like that makes sense to you, you're also welcome to try it. Pawn to d6, we have d4, captures, captures, and knight to f6. We have knight to c3 and a6, uh, the knight of variation of the Sicilian defense is on the board, and I consider this to be... Uh, the best maybe not for for playing but uh you know for for enjoyment and also for the audience as there are always fireworks when there's a knight of sicilian on the board and any move is a move here uh really any move you play uh, it, it has a name and it has tons of theory behind it here we have bishop to e3 by yuangi and this is something called the english attack i was playing some uh rapid games on leech yesterday and i won some very nice games uh, uh here i even had this position i played rook g1 uh, also one of my one of my favorites alongside the Adams attack and I was able to beat the 2350 opponent. Uh, I wasn't recording but if you guys want to see the moves it will be the first link in the description below. I managed to checkmate my opponent's king uh, uh, from, from g8. I, I took the king all the way to a5 and uh, was able to checkmate him there. So check it out if you enjoy my rapid games. But here we have bishop to e3 uh, and uh, pawn to e6. Okay uh, sorry not pawn to e5, pawn to e6. We have pawn to a3 and pawn to b5. Preparing to think to the light square bishop, putting pressure on that e4 pawn is the general idea. And pawn to g4. Of course, you want to get rid of the knight for, from f6. Uh, we have bishop to b7, uh, g5, knight to d7. Sorry, not uh, right away after bishop to b7, bishop to g2 first was played. And then only after knight to c6, which is a completely new uh, move. So as of move 9, we have a completely new game. Uh, pawn to g5 now. We have knight to d7. Pawn to h4 and now knight c to e5. Preparing to bring the knight to c5. So okay, Yuangi grabs more space. Pawn to f4 and knight to c4. Attacks the bishop and the b2 pawn. So the only reasonable move is bishop to c1. Uh, queen to c1 also can be played. Bishop to c1 is considered... Uh, uh, better, even though it's a new position, uh, you know, for, from experience, you know that bishop to c1 is the move. Uh, rook to c8, and now knight d to e2. Uh, we have queen to a5, getting the queen into the game, pinning the knight, and it's not easy to find the move for uh, for Yuan Yi here. He plays pawn to b3, challenges the knight, and it would be very, very silly for Ivanchuk to go knight to b6, because after b4, his queen would be trapped. So what was his idea after pawn to b3? Of course, pawn to b4. A counterattack. Okay, b captures on c4, b captures on c3, and rook to b1. Putting pressure on the bishop, Vassal brings the bishop back, and now queen to d4. A beautiful centralizing move by Yuan Gi. Uh, pawn to h6, this queen to d4 stops uh, both the g6 to fianchia to the bishop and also bishop to e7 as the pawn on g7 would hang. Uh, so pawn to h6, Vassal says, I wasn't planning on castling either way, my king will remain in the center, most likely on e7. Uh, g captures on h6, g, uh, sorry, rook captures on h6, and now pawn to f5. Going all out here, and just by looking at this position on move 20, you can see why the knight of Sicilian truly is uh, the, the, the best way to go. Uh, we have rook to h7, also an attack was opened up from the bishop to the rook, so rook to h7, f captures on e6, f captures, and now bishop to g5. Uh, here also worth exploring is queen f2 because you want to get the knight to, to f4 to put pressure on e6 but if you play knight to f4 right away then pawn to e5 attacks the the queen and the, the knight so maybe queen f2 knight to f4 and then the game continues um uh, w would be very interesting but okay bishop to g5 
Uh, and now bishop to e7, attacking the bishop. And again, you could capture, capture and go something like rook b3, go after the pawn. But Yuan Yi keeps the tension. Rook to h3 puts pressure on the pawn this way. And now Vassal just trades everything. Bishop captures, pawn captures, rook captures on h3, bishop captures, and queen captures on g5. We have bishop captures on e6. And now, uh, well, again, you could consider many moves. Knight to e5 is one fine idea. If the rook is captured, then knight f3 check wins the white queen uh, also some other ideas uh, maybe queen to h4 check uh, but he goes king to e7 and king to e7 is a very very tricky idea as uh, good old vassal is a very tricky player uh, bishop captures on d7 uh, what was his idea just capturing the bishop back well you could do that but that wasn't his idea his idea was rook to h8 and now, how can the white king survive? The, the pawn is covering the d2 square. You don't even need the queen to do that. And the rook is coming to h1. So if you save the bishop, let's say bishop f5, rook to h1 check, and you're going to win the rook on b1 and continue the attack. This is actually still fine, and white can play this. It just looks something like, I mean, it, it looks like something you really shouldn't allow, un unless you're an engine. So here we have queen to g1, stopping rook to h1, and now comes queen captures on g1 with check, knight captures, and king captures on d7 and okay rook to b3 maybe a bit more ambitious was rook to b6 just going after the a6 pawn but rook to b3 and now comes rook to h1 putting pressure on the knight and the problem is uh, how do you defend king f2 or king f1 both um uh, have their have their merits but after king f2 you also allow after for example bishop captures on e4 rook captures on c3 th uh, this rook h2 check and now you're just going to lose the pawn here if uh, king here you're going to capture and after rook captures bishop captures and you have this well fairly elementary end game with bishop versus knight and you're up a pawn and it's a pass g pawn so white black should win this maybe maybe it's possible to defend uh, but we have king to f1 which seems to avoid this idea but the king is far less less active on uh, f1 than it is on f2 so let's see how ivanchuk handles this we have bishop captures on e4 rook captures on c3 and now king to c6 preparing to bring the king into the game Rook to g3, defending the knight so the king can come up the board. Pawn to g6. Also, the g7 pawn was hanging. Pawn to c3, stopping bishop captures on c2. And now, rook to h2. And uh, here, you should play knight to f3. That is the move uh, that Yuangi should play. But he played rook to g4. He goes after the bishop. Now comes bishop to f5. Attack. Bishop to d3 check is also very nice. Bishop to f5 attacks the rook. Rook to d4. And now, rook to a2, going after the a3 pawn. To create a passed a pawn so knight to e2 finally activating the pieces rook captures on a3 we have king to e1 rook to a1 with check king to d2 rook to a2 with check and king to e3 we have rook to a4 uh, and now knight to g3 putting pressure on the bishop so rook a5 rook to f4 and now rook to e5 uh, with check kicking the king back or forward depending on what you play king to d4 and now pawn to a5 you can see that both of them are now on one minute on the clock and they are both playing an increment uh, we have rook f2 you have to try to stop that pawn somehow but pawn to a4 now vassal is ready to put a rook behind the pass pawn rook to a2 and now of course rook to a5 we have rook to a3 preventing the pawn from coming to a3 and now comes bishop to c2 and how do you how do you continue here well the position is objectively winning for for vassal let's see how he plays it we have rook to a2 by yuangi pawn to a3 uh, just giving up the bishop but of course the bishop cannot be captured if you capture it a2 and you have to capture with the rook otherwise you're just gonna uh, allow your opponent to promote the pawn to a queen so a3 knight to f1 we have bishop to b1 attacking the rook rook a1 and pawn to a2 so the rook is now trapped but the knight comes to the rescue knight to d2 threatens knight captures on b1 but just bishop to c2 uh, knight to f3, we have rook to a8 and king to e3. Uh, king to c5 and knight to d4. Attacking the bishop once again. Uh, bishop to b1 and now knight to b3 with check. We have king captures on c4, boldly played by Vassal. Uh, knight cap knight uh, to d2 with check. 
king captures on c3, going for another check, and now knight captures on b1 with check. But of course, you don't capture uh, and um, uh, bring a queen into the game, even though that it will be winning as well. You, you're up two pawns, uh, but just a nice simple king to b2. And he was in this position on move 56 that uh, Yuangi resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. So truly an exceptional game uh, by both of them. I mean, uh, the, the Knight of Sicilian can be played remarkably well with white and with black. Uh, I mean, if you if you enjoy open games, if you if you if you enjoy attacking chess, you you will love playing against the Knight of, and you will enjoy playing the Knight of. So if, if you know maybe you haven't tried it so far, definitely uh, give it uh, give it a shot. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We're even going to check out the standings as, uh, like I said, I didn't even know this event was um, uh, taking place. Uh, let me just load that up. There we go. Uh, oh, sorry. I thought I thought I had them here. Maybe here. Yeah, there we go. So these are the standings after nine rounds have been played. Uh, Pranav and uh, uh, Chitambaram Aravind won the tournament with seven out of nine, and then a bunch of people on six and a half, including yours truly, Vasily Vanchuk. So I'm in Tabatabai, Hans Niemann, uh, Vasily Vanchuk, Aditya Mittal, Shan Sargisyan, uh, and uh, uh, Pranesh and Eltar Safarli, all on six and a half points. And you can see even, uh, I mean, Vladislav Artemiev, who is an absolute beast, uh, only... Uh, in tenth place, I think Vassal played it in the, uh, played him in the penultimate round. The the game ended in a draw. So yeah, uh, beautifully played by both of them. But it is uh, Vassal who takes this one. And uh, yeah, I always say, even though okay, now he dropped his rating a little bit. He's twenty six oh nine. But you know, on a good day, he can take down. Uh, I mean, a, a twenty six hundred or twenty seven hundred and the twenty eight hundred player without uh, without uh, much difficulty. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Always a privilege to show you a Chucky game. Uh, I would like to thank Kevin O'Grady, James Eugene Cashman, Peter I. Billick, an anonymous person, and Ahmad Soita for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And do check out uh, my game in the description below if you if you guys enjoy my rapid games. See you soon.